Hello and welcome to the second episode of this Typing Puzzles series. In this one, we're going to be talking about a pattern that I saw a lot in, in two scenarios. One, really, really old Python code or code that was written from developers from other languages, especially JavaScript. JavaScript has this pattern all over the place uh, and you know, creeps into Python because it also works here, but there is usually a better way to write it. Anyway, let's jump into it. So as always, we are going to clone the repo from scratch. Uh, just to show the full setup here, typing puzzles, and I will set up a virtual env and install MyPy so you can see what version we are using today. I believe there's a brand new version of MyPy that just recently came out, 1.15. Uh, so we're on that newest version. Okay, and the puzzle for today is in the 002 directory, and let's open it up and talk about it. Okay, so uh, in this small example here we have a class c which implements some function that returns a string this is simply so i can have an object with a method on it uh, we have a function that takes either a string or it takes none uh, so you can optionally pass it none uh, or, or a string we didn't actually implement it it's not important this isn't where the problem is and then we have another function which optionally takes an instance of c and then passes along either none or the name and uh, again, this is one of those scenarios where looking at it, it's very clear. Well, maybe it's not very clear. Um, a human can tell that this function will only ever pass none or stir. Uh, that's how this expression evaluates. But MyPy doesn't understand this. Now, I did want to talk a little bit more about this. This is what I'm calling an old school ternary here. Uh, basically, the way this evaluates is uh, with chained ands the first falsy value or the last value will be what the expression is. And again, like this is why I try and avoid old school ternaries because it's a little bit difficult to, you know, it's, it's not obvious looking at this, uh, how that evaluates. Let me just show you that really quickly. Uh, so if you have none and uh, foo, you're gonna get, I guess we should print it so you can see more explicitly, you're gonna get none as the value here because this was falsy. And so um, shortcut evaluation is going to say, oh, so the first falsely thing we get, we can't possibly get a truthy value from the rest of this, so it doesn't even evaluate the rest of this. Uh, whereas if you have a truthy value here, so like true, uh, you're going to get the last value, the last, <laughs> I guess the last value independent of whether it's truthy or not. Uh, so in this case, you know, true and foo will give you foo, true and none will give you none, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, now the opposite is true for or. Uh, or will give you the first truthy value, so uh, it's not specific to this puzzle, but I figured I'd be complete anyway. So if you have uh, none or none or false or or something, uh, the first truthy value here is something. And so that out. If you had a truthy value in the middle here, you're going to get that. That's just how these evaluate. Uh, you'll see this pretty commonly in JavaScript where someone will say like, uh, let x equals uh, foo dot bar or some default. Uh, I see this all the time in JavaScript as a way to like, you know, this might be undefined, and so you'll set that as the value. Uh, and so this pattern often bleeds into other languages, and that's why we're seeing it here in Python, I guess. OK, so going back to this example, why doesn't MyPy know that this is always stir or none? And the reason for that is, uh, it doesn't know how the truthiness of C is implemented. Uh, and I, I don't believe that there's actually a way to teach it that properly. There may be some with TypeGuard or something, but in general, you can't teach MyPy the dynam dynamic runtime behavior of how the truthiness of C works. So it, it knows that this has a, a double under bool method, but it doesn't know how that functions. In this case, it's getting the double under bool method from object, and so maybe it could know Maybe it could know that object double under bool is always true, uh, unless it's none, and then it's always false, of course. Uh, and so maybe it could know this expression is always none or stir, but uh, there are cases where it couldn't know that. Like, for instance, if I had defined my own custom uh, double under bool here. Dang, I'm out of water. Oh, well. We'll do the rest without water. Um, and so what we have to do here, oh, I guess I should also show the MyPy error before we even try and fix it. Uh, the MyPy error that we're going to get here is argument one to F1 has incompatible type C or stir or none. Uh, and that is because MyPy doesn't know that, for instance, if we had defined def bool self bool 
return false, uh, then this expression here is always going to be either C or none. Uh, because even if you have a C, this is going to be none. And then this is actually unreachable in that case, which is kind of funny. Um, but MyPy doesn't know about this, so this could be either C or none. And so that's where it gets this type here, or it could be stir from here. And so that's why we get this triple union here. So we have to convince MyPy that it can never be C. And the easiest way to do that is to be extremely explicit about your ternary here. Basically, throw out the old school ternary and convert this to an explicit ternary. So you can say c.name if c is not none, else none is the more explicit way to write this. In this case, now uh, we're only evaluating c.name if c is not none, otherwise we're getting none. And so MyPy can directly infer that this is either going to be a stir or it's going to be a none. We run MyPy on this now, you'll see that it passes. Um, I also put that hint, a similar hint in the readme, although I'm a little, a little more covert about it. How does zero and one evaluate? How does none and one evaluate? Uh, to hopefully hint you in the right direction about how it might work. Uh, but anyway, that's our puzzle for today. Uh, very simply converting the uh, old school ternary into a new school ternary. I'll copy that to solution.py, rid of t.py, that and commit it. Solution 2002. And that's our puzzle for today. Hopefully, you found this interesting and uh, be on the lookout for more and discuss them in the Discord if you would like. And I will see you for the next one. Have a good one. Bye.